Hi everyone, this is Peter, and uh, I just want to do a short video on the subject of mannerism. Mannerism is a, an important and uh, profoundly influential art development that begins to emerge, especially in the neighborhood of Florence, um, probably around 1510, 1520. Um, it has a great deal of uh, consequence for the development of art, not just in the Italian peninsula, but also throughout uh, Northern Europe as well. Um, a couple of key things, I think, to take away from mannerism besides its um, historical context and geographical context uh, have to do with the principles or theories uh, at, at its root. The best place to begin is just to make a simple uh, visual comparison, and that would be um, to think about mannerism in the context of a visual comparison. The place that I like to begin is with this painting by Florentine artist Andrea del Sarto in uh, a painting known as the Madonna of the Harpies. It's a conventional title uh, that refers to these somewhat uh, peculiar creatures um, that stand in high relief at the base of this pedestal. Um, this is a good painting because, uh, at least in terms of discussing mannerism, because it is the product of an artist who's often described as a kind of um, persistently classical uh, artist, uh, someone who emphasizes values of rationality and symmetry and sort of harmonious proportions and so forth. But I think in this painting, we can see things begin to diverge uh, in a very different direction. One that uh, I think, as I'll point out in just a little bit, uh, has a great deal to do with the influence of um, of Michelangelo in particular. Uh, Andrea del Sarto's image here is loaded with a number of things that point to a different set of priorities. In particular, I would argue um, the poses of the two flanking saints, uh, uh, Francis on the left here and John the Evangelist on the right, but also in the somewhat precarious and unlikely position and posture of the Virgin Mary um, as she stands in a very precarious position up on this pedestal. A great place to maybe begin the, the comparison would be to just take a quick look at um, a comparison with uh, Raphael. And in this piece, we can see on the left is Madonna of the Meadow, which is roughly contemporary uh, with this, maybe about 10 years earlier. Um, the values that Raphael uh, tended to promote, especially in these early paintings, of stability and um, an overall sense of, uh, I guess for want of a better term right now, a sense of grace, a, a sense of a kind of almost normality to the scene. Um, and th those are subjective and potentially value-laden words, but I think it's appropriate here. The setting, for instance, makes a certain degree of uh, logical sense in terms of space and depth. Um, and so on. It's influenced to some degree, probably by the innovations of Leonardo da Vinci with that pyramidal or conical or compositional group. Um, if we compare it to the piece by Andrea del Sarto, a number of things immediately become obvious. We can start again with the position of St. Francis as he sort of orbits, sort of in this uh, semi-spiral stance, pushing off his foot. This is a a kind of trademark of Michelangelo, most dramatically seen around this time in the um, Sistine Chapel ceiling in Udi and, and, and Prophets. And you can see there's a strange uh, adherence in the saint's cloak to the contours of his leg, um, uh, probably showing off a little more than is absolutely necessary. Uh, the artist, and this is gonna be a key theme in mannerism, sort of virtuoso depiction of the human body. If you move across to the other side, a similar development is seen where St. John with a foot, again, slightly bent and pushing off the edge of this uh, platform right here, uh, sees the, um, the contours and forms of the body underneath the drapery uh, quite, uh, quite clearly. Um, the somewhat haphazard and unconventional holding of his book, again, with this distinctive split of the fingers right here. Um, again, another aspect of, of a, a kind of somewhat illogical and self-consciously 
uh, artificial uh, posture of the, of the figures. This is, again, a hallmark of mannerism to go beyond uh, the normal everyday kind of makes sense uh, from a standard kind of, um, you know, visual standpoint, um, go beyond that and sort of go in a artificial and what the Italians called a maniera, which is to say the invention and ingenuity of the artist in coming up with new uh, poses, perhaps unlikely or unnatural ones. If you move to the central element in this, unlike the relatively stable and, you know, sort of fixed uh, position of the Virgin on the left here, um, Andrea del Sarto's Virgin Mary is, is poised on a very, very precarious, narrow pedestal with a rather large and unlikely and somewhat impish looking Christ child. She also mirroring to some degree John the Evangelist posture has a book of some kind propped up on her thigh. Um, that sense of, again, of the contours, the forms of the Virgin's body underneath are prominent here. Unlike Raphael's ample and somewhat relaxing and harmonious uh, deep landscape, we see instead with Andrea del Sarto a very flat and pushed forward space. It's almost impossible to really see how uh, any of these figures fit within this shallow space. It's, uh, again, the sense of, of contrived and yet visually uh, compelling uh, vi uh, visual environment is typical of mannerism. So while Andrea del Sarto is often um, described as a, a kind of continuation of the classical style that Raphael especially is, is famous for promulgating, it's clear in the painting uh, Madonna of the Harpies, 1517, that something is, something's beginning to change pretty dramatically. If we look at probably one of the great examples of the Mannerist style, uh, just a few years later than the Andrea del Sarto example, in Jacopo da Pontormo's painting entitled, and I think it's, you know, it's variable in terms of what's actually going on here and how people read it. It's been variously described as a deposition, the entombment, uh, et cetera. I'm just putting a question mark on it here because ultimately we're not entirely clear, but it's a, again, an altarpiece Unlike Andrea del Sarto's relatively symmetrical and geometrically fixed composition, what happens with Pontormo's piece is a radical dissolution of that kind of framing. Instead, we have a, a strangely rotating circular motif with the Virgin Mary off to one side and Christ also off to one side and a kind of empty void punctuated only by the presence of hands. Um, and I wonder sometimes if there's a a bit of a pun there with the idea of maniera, meaning the hand of the artist. The central space of the painting is occupied by this uh, uh, set of, of basically four hands. The artist is portrayed, self-portrait on the right here. Um, the remainder of the figures are complex, fluid, and, and profoundly unnatural, particularly if we take the two young men that are supporting the body of Christ. The figure on the left here, uh, in blue, and, and often colors and mannerism can be unnatural or particularly brilliant or contrasting. So blue versus um, blue versus red here. And you can see the feet of this character, um, basically lack of engagement with the actual weight of Christ. And the same is seen in the arms and hands. This is a, actually a pretty substantial load that he would be carrying, but there's no real sense of actual human mass. Uh, pulling down upon uh, uh, his frame. The figure to the right, who's sort of squatting underneath the, pretty much the center of gravity of Christ's body, again, is perched on his toes as though this is no real weight at all, with a peculiarly bent. Uh, you do not want to bend your back like this. It's really not going to be good for your vertebrae. Both figures have this strangely unreal, quasi-emotional, but not really meaningfully emotional uh, expressions on their faces. Um, and this sense of artificiality and deliberate kind of, um, you know, artistic elegance that defies the laws in the case of these two figures, the laws of gravity um, and, you know, kind of visual expectations. Here's a closer look to give us a sense of precisely that lack of engagement with uh, issues of mass and, and human, basic human physiology. You'll notice also that the lack of real engagement with 
the, let me go forward a little bit, real engagement with the, the space that they inhabit. There's a sort of wan little cloud here, and there's no real sense of a ground line or any real engagement with, um, you know, space and, um, yeah, kind of gravity. Um, any of that seems to be uh, elided in this piece. If we look just a little bit closer, you can see again, Christ isn't particularly dead. The wound in his side is barely alluded to. Instead, the focus is on this real virtuoso depiction of hands. In fact, it's somewhat difficult to figure out where some of these hands are coming from and going to. Um, and that's, I think, that sense of indeterminacy and ambiguity is a hallmark of mannerism. Um, and again, that virtuoso depiction of hair, but a somewhat blank and unreal and artificial expression is noted here. One of the most famous pieces in mannerism is the so-called Madonna with the long neck, which trades upon typical uh, renditions of the Virgin Mary with Christ on her lap, but seems instead to kind of drift off into Michelangelo's Pietà, a famous sculpture that he uh, executed in the beginning of the 16th century in Rome. Parmigianino's rendition of the subject of the Virgin Mary pretty much defies all previous pictorial conventions, again, emphasizing the Virgin's body underneath this extravagantly virtuoso um, uh, drapery. It is perhaps a shout out to Michelangelo here with a strap across her chest. The drapery is so clingy that it even highlights her navel. Um, and this is the kind of thing that is, you know, starting to tread in dangerous water regarding decorum and clarity in terms of people looking at this and kind of understanding what's going on. And that certainly isn't helped by this figure in the background who perhaps is, a, you know, a Hebrew prophet, we really don't know, or this array of clearly unfinished columns. There's a, a host of ambiguities and peculiarities in this piece that makes it very difficult to understand exactly what it's about or where we are in relation to um, uh, the subjects in the foreground. Proportion is obviously uh, a key uh, in terms of Parmigianino's own uh, kind of understanding of the human body, in particular, of course, the aforementioned long neck, but also the extraordinarily long and not, uh, non-articulated, that is say, no joints or anything like that in the Virgin Mary's right hand. And of course, this Christ figure, much like Andrea del Sartos, is um, a little bit big, and in this particular case, uh, looks you know pr pretty close to dead. Is this indeed again a shout out to a reference to Michelangelo's uh, Pietà in Rome? Probably. Another aspect of mannerism that is typical, uh, speaking of ambiguity and confusion, is relatively abstruse and esoteric. Uh, underlying meanings. And this is one of the great examples by an artist known as Bronzino in a painting that was sent to the King of France, uh, conventionally titled again, Venus, Cupid, Folly, and Time, which probably is showing uh, in a somewhat moralizing sense the dangers of succumbing to the appeal of the senses and particularly framed, as you can see, with the two figures, fairly controversial figures of Cupid and Venus embraced in a somewhat incestuous way of um, the dangers of sexual um, temptation, uh, which comes along with things like madness, particularly in the form of jealousy, um, just just plain the kind of contrast between the sweetness of, of sexual pleasure, as you can see this honeycomb right here that terminates the, the beautiful face right here, terminates into the body of a griffin. Um, deception also echoed with masks, perhaps referring in a sense to the masks from the Medici tombs by um, by Michelangelo. So it's a, a real virtuoso piece that defies easy understanding, probably intended for a courtly audience, not for the general public. And these types of uh, characteristics are, are very, very common in mannerism. Again, virtuoso depiction of the human body, ignoring typical proportion or poses, um, oftentimes uh, complex and um, esoteric themes, and a general sense of the artist taking control of the process where before the artist would have been constrained by you know, typical uh, visual reality and traditional handling of themes.